From casual conversations with pals eventually paving the way for a part in an all-round comedy hit, to failed attempts at gaining other roles setting the stage for bigger things to come. This bunch of movie thespians hadn't the slightest clue what they were getting themselves in for. Gareth here from WhatCulture.com and here are 10 actors who didn't realize they were auditioning for movie roles. Number 10. Robert De Niro landed his role after his Godfather failure and work on Mean Streets, The Godfather Part 2. It's been pretty well documented how just about every single talented star working in the business at the time found themselves in the running to form part of Francis Ford Coppola's star-studded cast in the lead-up to the first Godfather flick. And amongst said unsuccessful but no less gifted thespians who just failed to make the Corleone cut on the first time of asking was none other than Robert De Niro. That being said, the eventual Raging Bull Titan did actually land the small role of Paulie Gatto in that first Godfather flick, before having to back out due to his commitments to the gang that couldn't shoot straight. But his auditions and work still more than made an impression on Coppola. Said auditions for The Godfather, including a failed read for the part of Sonny Corleone, coupled with his impressive work on Martin Scorsese's Mean Streets, were enough to secure De Niro the role of a young Vito Corleone in the highly anticipated part two of the series later down the road. And it wasn't long before Bob was bringing home the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor for good measure. Number 9. Wayne Knight Sweating Seals the Deal for Spielberg, Jurassic Park some directors feel that a character may live or die based on a thespian superstar smile. Others believe that it's impossible to move forward with a role unless the actor in question possesses the sort of charisma and charm that is simply undeniable. And then there's Steven Spielberg, a director who sensed that he absolutely needed someone who could deliver the damp if he was going to make Dennis Nedry the true scourge of his Jurassic Park. So after taking in Wayne Knight's dripping exploits during Basic Instinct's infamous interrogation scene, with his cop John Corelli gradually perspiring more and more with each passing tense moment in the well-known leg-crossing sequence, the dino director quickly got on the phone to the actor's agent. As Knight would eventually recall after being informed of unintentionally impressing the director with his drips, his agent told him that Spielberg's comments consisted of the film legend admitting, I see him in close-ups, sweating, only instead of open legs, it's a dinosaur. Just like that, Knight brilliantly traded basic instincts for basic extinct, a uh, thank you. Number 8. Daniel Radcliffe's Weird Rap Catches Al's Attention With The Al Yankovic Story Harry Potter star Daniel Radcliffe is so damn proficient at letting loose rhythmic verbiage that his unexpected rap prowess only went and landed him the role of Weird Al Yankovic without him even being aware of being in consideration for the balmy part. What a world, eh? As revealed by the Yankovic himself on Twitter in the lead-up to this year's Weird The Al Yankovic sort of biopic, Radcliffe's inspired rendition of Tom Leher's The Elements song on an episode of The Graham Norton Show alongside Rihanna and Colin Farrell clinched the deal for him. Radcliffe's deadpan execution of the super speedy elemental rap song was all Al needed to convince him he'd finally found the person to play himself down the road, something the actor was only made aware of upon eventually meeting the parody king for the first time. That and the look of sheer confusion on Rihanna's face as the one-time Potter appeared to musically malfunction a bit. Number 7. Shouto Copley's test footage leads to the real deal, District 9. With the future acting star hardly even considering a career in front of the camera back in the mid noughties Charlotte Copley was much more focused on setting up his own TV station than being a Hollywood superstar. But his path changed somewhat the second the South African's Johannesburg school friend Neil Blomkamp asked his pal if he would show up as a bumbling bureaucrat in some test footage he wanted to show Peter Jackson in a bid to get his idea for a sci-fi film off the ground. This found footage tester more than did the trick in the end, with Jackson being all too happy to produce the flick, but it also convinced both the Lord of the Rings Titan and eventual District 9 director that Copley was actually the guy to lead the incoming movie. And despite Copley openly admitting to thinking it's impossible, I didn't even know I could do it, in regards to leading such a high-profile project, District 9 went on to become a smash hit and established the unexpected talent as Hollywood's latest new star. Number 6. Harrison Ford couldn't help being the best person for the job during his audition reads. Star Wars Merged to Harrison Ford's disappointment, George George Lucas's demand not to work with anyone he had on his last film by the name of American Graffiti when casting his next project Star Wars soon left him on the outside looking in. That was until Lucas stumbled upon his one-time actor turned carpenter working on a door at American Zeotrope, where Star Wars auditions just so happened to be held. Soon enough, the director asked Ford if he fancied reading in for the role of Han Solo opposite the hopeful actors trying their best to secure a role in the galaxy far, far away. But in the end, after seeing everyone from Kurt Russell 
Russell to Christopher Walken attempt their best space age smuggler, only one name really resonated with Lucas as his solo. After impressing during reads opposite the likes of Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher, Ford managed to somehow land the role of a lifetime, with Lucas making a wise exception to his aforementioned no American graffiti actors rule by casting the magnetic presence in the leading role post read throughs. Number 5. Charlize Theron didn't know her bank meltdown was a manager audition. Children of the Corn 3. Charlize Theron's legitimate meltdown in the middle of a bank being witnessed by an audience was arguably the most significant moment of her life. Admittedly, the eventual Oscar winner's pleading with a bank teller to cash an out of state check didn't immediately lead to her suddenly starring in a blockbuster feature. But the South African American, knowing her power and refusing to take no for an answer back in the mid 90s, soon caught the attention of the next person in line at said bank, talent agent John Crosby. Without skipping a beat, Crosby proceeded to cash the check for Theron before offering her representation, a move that would ultimately set her acting career in motion and eventually pave the way for a non-speaking part in horror flick Children of the Corn 3 Urban Harvest. You know, that one. And as Theron herself would admit when talking to Oprah about the impromptu audition of sorts, there's nothing more powerful than a vulnerable woman. I knew my power, what I didn't know is that I was auditioning for a guy who would end up being my manager. If I hadn't met John, I don't know what I would have done next. Number 4. Mila Kunis eventually aged into her role after constantly suggesting other stars. Ted. Acting as one of Seth MacFarlane's most trusted thespians throughout her time voicing the role of Meg Griffin on Family Guy, the creator of that animated hit coming to Mila Kunis for advice when casting his first real live-action big-screen endeavor made all the sense in the world. But instead of happily settling on one of the many names the Friends with Benefits star suggested for the part of Laurie, opposite Mark Warburg's John Bennett and McFarlane's own fuzzball Ted in the titular flick, the director continued his search for an age. In fact, he took so damn long trying to decide on who would be the perfect fit for the role that Kunis herself actually wound up aging into the part under his very nose. That's according to Kunis herself, as the eventual Ted star revealed on the Happy Sad Confused podcast recently that she'd already technically gone through like a year of casting with him before she was even in the running for the role. As she put it, it took a while for a talking bear movie to get made, and I kept throwing out names like, what about that person? She's a great actress. And then all of the sudden, I started getting older and older and older, and in Hollywood, I now can play opposite Mark Wahlberg, magically. Charming. Number 3. A Hishina had no clue she was in an audition. Audition. Before being cast in Takashi Mike's disturbing 1999 horror film about a widower staging a fake audition in a bid to find a new partner, Ihishina actually found herself in a rather similar, though a touch less chilling, scenario, before being officially brought aboard as Asami Yamazaki. As the star would note to AMP when discussing her first interaction with the recently voted scariest foreign horror film of all time's director, all those years ago, a standard meeting soon ended up turning into far more than what she was expecting. As she put it, I simply spoke my mind without really paying any attention to any of what I said. Before I realized it, a few hours had passed. Suddenly, the person in charge of the audition interrupted our conversation and said that we ran out of time. I concluded that the audition seems to be a lot of fun, and I went back home without even thinking that I would end up in the film. As it goes, this long-form philosophical conversation about all things the audition was actually Sheena's very own audition for the part of Asami, with the director eventually calling her up the next day to offer her the career-making role of the entirely mysterious figure. Number Number 2. Patton Oswalt was cast as Remy due to a food menu stand-up routine. Ratatouille. How do you land on the voice of a rodent who dreams of one day becoming a fully-fledged chef? Head out to your local comedy club and listen out for a comedian with a strong distaste of the Black Angus Steakhouse restaurant, apparently. That is how Brad Bird managed to figure out who would step under the chef's hat for his 2007 Pixar entry by the name of Ratatouille, at least. With the director revealing around the time of the flick's release that he knew Patton Oswalt was the voice of his Remy, upon taking in the comedy star's previously noted Black Angus Steakhouse routine. Unbeknownst to Oswalt, Bird was completely won over by his explosive takes on the restaurant and passion for food. Admitting that he was so volatile about food and so passionate and funny about it, you know, it just struck me that's the character. Who knew an explicit routine about being aggressively served larger-than-life grub at a steakhouse could lead to a starring role in a family-friendly feature, eh? Number 1. Barry Keegan's Riddler tape unintentionally landed him the Joker, the Batman. Barry Keegan's iteration of the Clown Prince of Crime has already gotten fans excited about whatever the future may hold for Robert Pattinson's Dark Knight. That wasn't actually the role the Irish star had his mind set on landing, heading into Matt Reeves' take on all things Gotham, however. In the time before being handed the part of Mr. J, or even being made aware of the villainous icon's presence in the flick, Keegan caught wind 
of the Riddler having a key role in this new bat flick and wanted in. So the star set about taping a bit of footage of himself in his own version of Riddler's Get Up, strutting around a corridor to the sound of some creepy music. Said unsolicited audition tape, which also boasted Keegan smirking towards the camera with a bloody handprint on his mug at one point, didn't win him Paul Dano's eventual role, obviously, but it did back him the Joker part some four months on from pressing send. With Keegan noting to GQ how his agent broke the news to him with a simple, the Batman wants you to play the Joker, but you cannot tell anyone. Keeping his grinning mouth well and truly zipped, Keegan's brief final moments in the Batman and subsequently released deleted scene both came as welcome surprises that have teased a truly chaotic future. And that's our list. Know of any other actors who didn't realize they were auditioning for movie roles? Let us know all about them in the comments section right down below, and do not forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button while you're at it. Also, if you like this kind of thing, then head on over to whatculture.com and find some more awesome articles just like the one this video you're watching right now is based on. I've been Gareth from whatculture.com. Thank you, as always, for clicking on this lovely video today. Hopefully, I'll see you very, very soon, but in the meantime, be good to yourself. Bye-bye.